once in a while, you get a book that you can't put down. And I am so honored and happy to have this author here, Pauline Dakin, your book. At first I was going, hmm, reading the front flap, but then chapter after chapter, this book, I swear, reads like a movie. So it's about your childhood, folks. It is true, mm -hmm. but in a nutshell, like for, I don't know how many minutes it will take you, but sort of summarize what Run, Hide, Repeat is all about. Well, when I was growing up, uh, a lot of thing, strange things were happening. Starting about the time I was seven, um, my mother left her marriage. Uh, my dad was alcoholic and abusive. And she went uh, to Al-Anon, the group that helps families of alcoholics. Where, and they recommended that she see a counselor named Stan Sears. And he was a United Church minister in North Vancouver. And uh, he counseled her. She uh, recovered from depression. She left her marriage successfully. She actually went to work in his church for a while. And we became, his family and my family became very close friends. Uh, that's when weird things started to happen. And, uh, you know, we would come home from school and be whisked into the bathroom. And you have to wash your feet with this, you know, water with some kind of powder in it. Um, and there was no explanation. Or we would wake up in the morning and, well, we're not going to school today. Well, we're going on a little family camping trip or hiking trip. Uh, and it all seemed very strange. And then it, the, the strangest thing was uh, when we disappeared twice. Uh, the first time we left Vancouver and came to Winnipeg mm -hmm. on vacation and then we're told we're not going back. Uh, so we never had a chance to say goodbye to our family or friends, mm -hmm. we just disappeared. Uh, and then that happened again when we left Winnipeg and ended up in St. John, New Brunswick on the other end of the country. And my brother and I, you know, would say, what is wrong with this family? Well, you know, and, and the answer was always, I'll tell you when you're older. And then when I was 23, my mother uh, called me and said, okay, let's meet, it's time, I'm going to tell you. And I went to meet her at a motel in rural New Brunswick and walked in the door and there was Stan Sears, who I thought had retired out west. They always moved with us when we ran. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, the two of us told me that, or the two of them told me that we had been on the run from the mafia. And that was what explained all the strange behavior that we'd been um, targeted. Uh, by the Mafia because supposedly my dad was involved in the Mafia and Stan had counseled somebody else who'd been involved in the Mafia and uh, the mob thought that that was too much of a coincidence and so they targeted us. Yeah, and Stan would get secret code messages on his cell phone. I mean, there's so many things that happen, but I think if we go further into the book, it's about you coming to grips with all of this, Pauline. and. Mm. I, it was hard. It was very hard. I, 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 one of the most difficult things was the bizarre nature of this. And you talk about the messages and so on. So part of the story was that we had been uh, covered or given protection by sort of a shadowy security group associated with the Anti-Organized Crime Task Force. Um, and my mother was going to go into protective custody on the inside. And ultimately, I found um, it wasn't true. I discovered. Uh, in a kind of deliberate way, I kind of put a test to it and discovered that none of it was true. It was a hoax. And I could not figure out why would this man, Stan Sears, who came to be like a father to me, I didn't know why he would do this to my family. I knew my mother truly believed it, that she couldn't have been involved in making it up. Uh, and she did believe it until the day she died, even though I satisfied myself it wasn't true. So yeah, it was a very difficult thing to come to terms with. Yeah, and so I guess, Making this book, writing this book, is a little bit of a, a release for you. I mean, you are a CBC journalist, so you know you know the whole side of an, the investigative part of that. But yeah. for you now, Pauline, moving on in your life, what has it been like? Well, the key thing that really has helped me put it all into a context that I can live with is the fact that in my research for the book, I stumbled upon uh, what was described as a very rare psychiatric disorder called delusional disorder. And I realized that's what Stan had because he never had the symptoms that you associate with psychosis or schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And so realizing that, and I consulted with a couple and interviewed a couple of psychiatrists and they confirmed, oh yes, that's a really interesting case of delusional disorder. And that allowed me to kind of stop feeling angry and 
and understand that nobody meant my family harm. We just happened to run into somebody at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, once again, I, it, this book should be a movie. Has anybody approached you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are some offers <laughs> being looked at. Oh, well, welcome yeah. back to Winnipeg. I hope, hopefully, this visit has been much more pleasant. It's been wonderful to be back in Winnipeg. Wow, you've got a foodie thing going on here that's wonderful and visiting some old places. It's been great. Well, thank you so much, Pauline Dakin. Get her book, Run, Hide, Repeat.